have this opportunity to present to you today um, the use of my test and how one can follow up on this. And I hope uh, that you will be able to get some good uh, teaching ideas based on the presentation. So those will be the major areas that we will be covering today in this uh, presentation. Okay, the BAME 3 uh, covers two age levels, um, preschool and school age. It assesses knowledge of basic concepts uh, essential to learning to read, solve math problems, and follow directions. The test and norms are available in both English and Spanish. Um, and I will proceed to describe each of these instruments a little bit more in the next few minutes. The items on the test were chosen to align with early childhood curricular materials and benchmarks and to reflect language usage in the classroom. A major function of the test is to identify gaps in learning to guide instruction of important language concepts at school and at home. Basic concepts, as they're covered on both versions of the BAME 3, are relational concepts such as more and less and same and different, and large and small. They are important uh, for language and cognitive development. They're central to understanding everyday language. They're used across all school areas um, of learning. Uh, they are essential to following directions and classroom routines. They're important building blocks, and they're uh, used across all languages and all cultures. Basic concepts refer to a broad variety of situations in everyday life. They're, they are applied across contexts, including space, which car is before or after another truck in line, uh, quantity, what number comes before or after the number five, time, what happened before or after the party or at the beginning and the end of an event. They're used across all of our senses, what we hear, what we taste, what we feel, and they are really important as we want to express our uh, emotions and to uh, describe the experiences that we have to others. Something that we need to think about as we move through this presentation is that basic concepts are used at many levels of difficulty from concrete uh, to abstract, and I will try to uh, demonstrate that in the, in, uh, today as we move across the uh, various um, items that I will be presenting uh, here. Okay, in the areas of reading, math, and science, here are some of the many ways uh, basic concepts are used. They're really important to time and sequence, such as beginning and end, what happened first or last. They're related to positions in space, what's near and far us or above and below us. They're certainly important when we describe quantity, and they're used to count and make com comparisons, more, less, few, some, many, most, um, they're related to size, speed, and distance, large, small, near, far. They're certainly important um, to general uh, book uh, concepts, such as the front of and back of the book, the top and the bottom of the page, uh, that we begin reading from uh, left to right if we're reading in English. Um, and they're certainly related to uh, sounds and emotions as we hear high and low sounds or I feel the same way as you. Um, so they're important to cross all areas of life for uh, young children. 
Basic concepts are also important for success on other tests and in other assessment activities. And I've listed just a few examples here of how they might appear in test items. When children are asked to identify how two things are the same or how two things are different or find the object that is missing from the picture or point to a flower under the tree or a mark underneath a line. And they're certainly important in test directions, such as start at the top of the page and you work your way down to the bottom. Um, go to the next item when you're finished. Work across the page from right to left and so forth. Many of you can think of many of the, these uses um, as you think about the tests that you might be uh, using uh, to uh, work with young children. The bottom line with assessment activities is to discover whether or not students understand uh, the directions for completing a task before engaging in the assessment task. If kids don't understand the directions um, of what they need to do, then the meaning of that particular assessment uh, tool does not have very much meaning. Another thing to think about, which is really important, and I will explore a little bit more with you uh, today, is that understanding a concept in one context does not ensure understanding in another. And any one test, including my own, provides only a snapshot of a child's functioning. Um, and we will explore some ways in which this can be uh, followed up in uh, a later slide. Observation and recording across contexts is essential. The BAME 3 preschool, again, as I mentioned earlier, is available in English and Spanish. It assesses 26 concepts at two age levels, um, age 3 and then ages 4 to 5 years of age. What I've attempted to do in this instrument is to assess each concept twice um, in order to identify concepts that are known, that are emerging, or not yet developed um, in young children. Norms and interpretive information are presented by six-month age bands. A parent report, report form is available, and a teacher observation form is also included. What I've done on the record form, and that I hope will be of help to users, is to lay out the two items that measure each concept um, on adjoining uh, columns so that comparisons can be made across the performance um, on each of the concepts assessed. And what I've already um, uh, mentioned and but want to um, again indicate is that hopefully by circling the child's response uh, to the question, one be can begin to explore uh, the strategies or the errors that a uh, child uh, might make on this particular uh, instrument. A report is provided for parents of all concepts a, a child is familiar with and those still de developing in English or Spanish. Every concept that is assessed on uh, this instrument and on the, on the school age version of the instrument is indicated. There are no secrets um, on this test. Hopefully, anyone using the outcomes will be able to help uh, children learn the target concepts that are of in importance in all areas of learning. Uh, parents, uh, should be reassured that outcomes are meant to guide instruction. Okay, so using the response form, um, users will be able to review whether the child answered one or both items, review if there's a pattern of errors that a child makes, do they select, for example, the opposite member of a concept pair? which happens to be a very common developmental problem. 
uh, for children as they're learning concepts. They're not just randomly um, making a response. And this is kind of interesting to know because it can be built into instruction. Um, also, the performance range uh, is provided, uh, whether the child knows most of the basic concepts that children his or her age knows, knows many of them, um, or some of them, or is not yet um, familiar with many of the uh, concepts assessed, at least in the context in which they're assessed. If English is not the child's first language, it's really important to explore whether the concept is recognized in the home language. Um, because in that case, we're not dealing with um, a child not being familiar with the concept, but we're uh, dealing with the child not being familiar with the English term for that particular concept. So it's um, really important uh, to uh, think of this. Another way that the outcomes can be used is to look at those that are easy or present difficulty for the class as a whole, uh, which might be uh, built into more systematic instruction. And I will cover some of ideas about how that might be uh, provided a little bit later on in this uh, presentation. The school-age version of the test measures 50 basic concepts that appear in print material, school curricula, and verbal instruction. That's how the items were developed in the first place, by a review of curricular materials in math and in reading from five different publishers. Um, at the time I first uh, developed these materials, as well as looking at the concepts that teachers embed in their everyday um, interactions with uh, children in the classroom. This test can be administered individually or in small groups or in a larger group if it's used at uh, the upper age band uh, for which it has been developed. Norms are provided by grade level for K-2 to for both fall and spring to allow for pre- and post-testing. Um, to assess within your pro uh, progress, which might be important for some of you. And two parallel forms are available uh, in both English and in Spanish, along with norms for both uh, groups. Okay, this is an example, which you probably cannot see very well, of the school age uh, record form that goes uh, back to uh, uh, teachers uh, here and what is colored in uh, different colors here are the, the different applications of uh, concepts, whether they're uh, basically uh, for space or for quantity, for time, or they're used across all major areas of learning. <coughs> Some of the many uses that can be made of outcomes um, are as follows. Using the class record form um, allows assessors uh, or the teacher to review entire class performance, helps the assessor identify concepts that are difficult for several children um, and should be embedded into ongoing instruction, or those that are uh, difficult for specific children and should be addressed through individualized intervention. Again, information on error types can uh, contribute uh, to instruction. Again, the parent report form lists all of the concepts covered and highlights those the child has not yet developed. In addition, uh, this, uh, the form provides for suggestions for how parents can help uh, their child learn uh, these concepts at home. Okay, so here are the major uses for outcomes. To identify basic concepts that are difficult for individual children and the class as a whole in relation to children of the same age or grade. To inform instruction and intervention in, a, in accordance with evidence-based practice, 
and to document progress related to Common Core standards, state goals, local goals um, that might be important for the age group of children that you are working with. The outcomes can inform all three levels of response to intervention. Uh, at Tier 1, being of assistance to teachers and specialists to develop uh, teaching activities and to track progress. At Tier 2, the teacher and the specialist can provide more explicit instruction. And at Tier 3, if a child is a, identified with a special need and is provided with more intensive intervention services, can help uh, the uh, person doing the more intensive services tar target in on really important con the concepts that the child has yet to learn. A few things to think about um, when interpreting outcomes are the importance of a child's early learning environment. At the end of the presentation, you will see a reference uh, list, and the work that I'm uh, citing from here is Hart and Risley. And it is so important to think about how important the early uh, language exchanges the child has uh, with a, a, a caregiver in his or her environment. Um, and these background experiences will really make a difference in the ease of learning basic concepts. The more words the child has heard and learned, the better he will be able to succeed later on in school. And basic concepts are a lot of these early words. Another important uh, piece of evidence is that children come to school with very different types and degrees of oral language uh, practice. Um, a, the resource to look for here is Shirley Bryce Heath. It's in the reference list. But some children come to school with forms of practice that the school wants. Others do not uh, come with that kind of practice. And so uh, the bridge needs to be made for these children to gain that kind of experience. Another factor to consider is the work by Penny and Quinn that some children have not had the opportunities to label or respond to what, when, why, where, how, the kinds of questions that you might be presenting uh, to them in tests. And so, again, this underlines the importance of thinking about the early experiences that the uh, child has uh, had and what is needed in the, in the school. Uh, so, uh, as Tanya and Quinn point out, some children may have know the function of objects, but not their object lines. The bottom, bottom line here is children may be perform poorly on a task or a test because they're not familiar with the format of the test directions, and they may not be familiar with the tasks themselves. It's really important that this poor performance not be misinterpreted as a language delay or a lack of readiness uh, skills for dealing with the tasks of school. It all needs to be checked out. So I want to not slide over that slide. Where do we go with the outcomes um, assessment? And it's really important for us to think about how does the student perform? And to explore possible reasons for the uh, difficulty, and I've suggested uh, two of them um, that are evidenced in the research uh, literature here. The third thing is to raise hypotheses and set learning goals. And finally, to establish a teaching and intervention uh, plans and certainly to continue to check out results and to move to the next higher or level uh, goal that you are really uh, concerned with. So I'm going to kind of review each of these uses uh, of what we need to do with outcomes of an assessment device in the next few uh, slides that are presented uh, here. 
okay, first assess the entire class at the pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade levels um, early on in the school year. This will give you a broad picture quickly of what is uh, the kinds of concepts that present difficulty for groups of children or an individual child. Um, by the end of first grade, most children should know most of the basic concepts um, at the, a simple level, at least, um, and may not have as much uh, difficulty in dealing with them at more complex levels, but we will explore that in a little bit of time. For those children who are having a lot of difficulty with these, a really important next step is to observe them in their ongoing classroom activities. Um, so I'm going to move uh, to that stage in a moment and conduct a brief strategy interview, maybe engage the child in a, a mini-teach to test out possible reasons for difficulty, develop your intervention activities, and then chart progress. So I'm going to kind of explore each of these areas with you. Okay, as I indicated earlier, the, by assessing the entire class, you'll be able to find out uh, those concepts that may be difficult for the class as a whole or for individual children. No um, special training is needed uh, in order to administer this instrument. Of course, a careful reading of the and following the administrative uh, directions is important, but it can be administered by uh, a teacher or another specialist, um, and so, so that uh, one can does not need to have a lot of specialized training in order to administer uh, the instrument. Okay, by observing children in the, um, concern in ongoing classroom activities. Um, one can think about uh, this uh, next step in a number of ways. One is how are basic concepts embedded into classroom routines and activities? In what ways are they used across different contexts that of uh, activity that are taking place in classrooms? In what ways uh, does the teacher provide feedback to children who are still learning concepts or for whom English is not their home language? Uh, these are all important things that you can gain through uh, ongoing observation in the uh, classroom. Now I'm going to move to the next slide here. Whoops, where's my arrow? Here we go. Okay. So, your observations um, can be used to uh, think about the following things. The child may really be unfamiliar with the concept term. The child may be familiar with the term in home language or might be familiar with the term in another context. There are some children you will discover who are ready to learn but have yet, not yet had experience with the term. Um, but they're ready to learn easily, and it's kind of fun to do that with them. Some children are able to understand the term when it's used in a story sequence or recounting a really familiar uh, event, but when a new uh, situation is presented to them, have difficulty using that concept term. So another important thing is to see if the the child can use the term in their everyday talk when engaged with a familiar activity. So your observations are really, really essential. For a child for whom there is some concern, uh, a brief strategy interview is uh, really useful. And in order to do this, select uh, one or two concept uh, terms the child has uh, answered correctly in one or two that uh, the child has not understood, uh, at least as they're assessed. And 
Ask a question such as the following. How did you figure out your answer? But little kids might say, mm, I don't know. Mm, and you say, well, give it a shot. What do you think? How would you tell a little kid to, to do this? And surprisingly, these children can come up with a lot of their responses uh, with a reason for their responses. And this can help you to understand some of the sources of error, uh, some emerging concepts, some, some of the strategies that they use, um, such as using a related term or a simpler term by focusing in uh, their attention on only part of the instruction. Lots of hypotheses that this will help you answer. So you might want to think about attention, memory, language, the testing situation, lack of exposure, child's cognitive processes. These are all areas for you to develop as hypotheses as you use the results of this uh, particular assessment approach, or for that matter, uh, most assessment approaches that you might be using in uh, the classroom. A mini-teach with some children can help you figure out uh, what to do next and, or to test out your hypotheses. So again, if the child is familiar with the concept in his or her home language, you are dealing with a vocabulary versus a concept issue. Then try teaching the concept using familiar objects such as toy cars or anything that the child might be interested in, trying to draw upon their background experiences and interests. Some kids catch on right, right away. They may not have been introduced to a concept term in everyday uh, life. So let's say that we are interested in the concept middle. You might want to use a, a other objects, I have three uh, toy cars here, but you might want to use a bus and a truck if you don't want to use the color not names. If that might be a confounding issue for some children. And place the um, objects in different positions and uh, then see if the, you can, the child can figure out which car to put in the middle um, or identify the car that is in the middle. And you can change those positions and it's fun. I was working with a, a five-year-old child at one point of time who was unfamiliar with the term pair, P-A-I-R. Um, and so I said to this uh, uh, child, a pair is something that you always have with you. You have, it's two of a kind. You have two ears, you have two eyes, you have a pair of arms and a pair of legs. The kid caught on right away. He had not been introduced to this particular term at um, an earlier stage of his experience or didn't remember it at any rate. Okay, then you're going to want to develop instructional activities um, and to develop a systematic plan uh, for teaching concepts. Certainly use the target term, terms uh, that you are interested in frequently. Base Emphasize basic concepts as tools to follow directions, and I'm, I'm going to detail each of these areas. Use them as tools of thinking. Scaffold learning by expanding on what the child says, making connections. Ask open-ended questions. Have fun. You want the children really to be able to uh, learn these early, very, very important concepts that they're going to be using uh, later on and chart progress. I've listed a little chart here that could be developed for any of the target uh, terms that you are uh, interested in, and I will um, develop each of these areas in a few minutes as I go through some of the many ways that you will be able to uh, teach uh, concepts for to young children. Here the concepts are that are targeted for uh, learning are near, far, and the related c concepts closer to, away from. And so we're going to begin with a child in relationship to their own body, then with objects, 
moving near and far from a mirror and noticing what happens as you move farther away from a mirror, and of course you're getting smaller and smaller. Uh, use them to describe different kinds of picture card scenes um, and so forth. I'm not going to go through each of these areas now, but I am going to build on them in a few minutes uh, in a more specific way. So there are many ways these can be charted out that should be of help uh, to the teacher uh, in the classroom and could be placed in the child's portfolio as you track progress over the year. Okay, we use basic concepts in many ways every day. For example, we can talk about the first tomato of the season, the small strawberries we pick, the ball rolling under the chair, since these concepts are relation, relational, they are applied to many situations that change. The tallest child in one group of children might be the shortest in another. The box at the top of the pile can be moved to the bottom of the pile. This shifting use of concepts makes them difficult for many children. And it's for this reason that it's important to revisit the concepts um, over many, many situations and over time. It's important also to uh, think about the fact that there is a general order of uh, concept difficulty, which I will uh, provide a little example of in a uh, few minutes. By the time children are three years of age, they're going to know concepts such as in and on and big and up. These are things that they have experienced early on and are among some of the first words that they uh, develop. As I've kind of indicated earlier, there are systematic sequential stages of acquiring many concepts so that a child might learn one member of a concept pair, such as big, before little, and most children do learn big before little. And part of that reason is when we're talking about uh, big and little and large and small, the positive, what is often referred to the positive um, member of the concept pair, also describes the dimension that you're uh, looking at. There may be a number of other reasons uh, for that uh, that might influence this acquisition including the fact that when we are working with uh, young children, we're probably talking about things that are big, the things that they want more, um, rather than things that are little and or things that they want less. So adults tend to use these uh, words as well. So one needs to think about that when you're planning uh, your intervention. Also, and this I'm try, we'll try to uh, demonstrate in these few pictures, the orientation of objects influences their difficulty. Okay, we can have a, a doll uh, or a jar, and I can say to you, well, the, the, the top of your head and the bottom of your feet are still the same when you're fast asleep. So even though the doll changes its position, um, in, uh, on a bed or lying down on the couch, um, the top of the child's head is still the same. However, what's on top of the child is different. Uh, so how we are using this in a, uh, linguistically makes a really, really important uh, difference. And it can be fun to experiment with uh, a mason jar or any jar or bottle that you have. And certainly you can turn uh, the jar upside down and the top of the jar, if you mean the cover of the jar, will be um, on the bottom of the jar when you turn it upside down. But if you're placing an object on top of the jar, uh, no matter how the jar is positioned, uh, there is an on top and an on the bottom uh, position for that particular kind of object. So orientation 
also is another factor to think about as you have fun and play and demonstrate uh, these various concept terms. Okay, so the child may know, not be familiar with either member of a concept pair, but know something about it, um, learns one member of the concept pair. Often the child will confuse that with its opposite, and the child learns to use both members of a concept pair, and then he can begin or she can begin to use them at different levels of complexity. And I will explore that as well. Okay, some concepts uh, present challenges for other uh, uh, reasons. Um, so, if in English, at any rate, if we are identifying the back and front of objects with a defined front and back, such as a chair, it's pretty easy to learn this early on. And it's much easier than identifying the front and back of a table, which depends on the perspective of the viewer. So individual uh, concepts uh, present challenges, and right and left are two concepts that continue to present uh, a challenge uh, to learners um, when they're in second grade and beyond, particularly if you need to take the perspective of another. So. Here are um, some of the uh, concepts that were the easiest um, for uh, children um, as measured by the, the preschool version of the test, and some of them that were more uh, difficult, as you can uh, see. So what I've tried to do in this chart is the next and the next slide, and I won't read all of the terms, but you can come back to them, is to see which of the concepts were easy for uh, children as young as uh, three years uh, to three years of uh, five months of age and, and so forth, um, so that you can get some feeling of the order of concepts uh, difficulty as they were assessed on uh, the Bain test of basic concepts. So that's what this uh, chart needs, uh, attempts to do for you. It's important to think as well that the order of difficulty of concepts is not exactly the same uh, for children who um, are being assessed in Spanish in, really, in contrast to English. So concepts in another language uh, may develop at another uh, rate for a number of reasons. There may be more specific terms in that home language or uh, there may be more general terms in that language. So there are a lot of reasons for this possibility. So it's important to think about that uh, as well. So what I want to do in the next uh, session, uh, part of the session, is to think about things to build into uh, teaching uh, that are really important. The first thing is to use concrete and represented applications uh, in relationship to the uh, child. This is fun. You can have the whole group of uh, preschool children jumping over a box or climbing under uh, a table. So they get the feeling in relationship to their own body or to the motions that they can engage in in real life. Uh, so. That is the first thing to think about when introducing uh, concepts uh, at the preschool level and certainly uh, is important for many children at the kindergarten level and beyond if they have uh, other kinds of needs. Then use concepts in relationship to concrete objects and to practice the concept in the child's immediate environment at school and at home and introduce the concept of opposites so that we certainly know, know that over is the opposite of under. So children are also learning the word opposite and exactly what it means in relationship to the set of concepts that we are uh, very much concerned with. So 
use objects that are fun, that are familiar to the child, um, and um, explore the concepts and relationship to things in everyday uh, life. The next thing to think about um, is to use uh, concepts in a two-dimensional sense. Um, and one can use photos or pictures to illustrate uh, the concept, or now we have video or um, activities that one might be able to access on the web that can help uh, the child move to this uh, particular level of representation. Read books that illustrate target concepts um, or that embed the concepts. Ask children to draw pictures and then um, have them talk about their uh, pictures or uh, describe or identify what's on the top of their page and on the bottom of their picture. So somehow they can make a connection in this uh, sense uh, of the term. Keep in mind that some concepts such as soft and hard and fast and slow are hard to uh, represent in pictures without the child having some prior experience with that object. And of course, fast and slow, there are other signals that will help you recognize that once you move to two-dimensional kinds of representations. So that's kind of interesting. It's really, really important to encourage children to use concept terms in their own speech um, so that you might set up situations that encourage uh, children to use the concepts or to elicit them, uh, such as engaging in play, using puppets and toys, and uh, talking with the child with a puppet and uh, so forth so that they can uh, respond to different kinds of questions. So you can say, what was this puppet doing, or where was uh, the uh, ball in the picture, and so forth, in order to encourage um, the children to be able to respond to these many, many formats. And then use alternative words that uh, can be used to help describe uh, a relationship. A child might be introduced to the word same, but not know alike. Um, in fact, we had the example of a test where the sample item was uh, presented uh, with the word same uh, illustrated, but when it came to the test items, a like was used, and the child uh, thought that the uh, assessor wanted to know what that child liked rather than a like in that particular instance. So there, it's important to introduce uh, related terms uh, as well. I'm really big on wanting to help children make a representation in memory so that they can apply the concept in new situations down the road, keeping in mind that these situations change all of the time uh, for the child. So. Uh, one can have an example where uh, you have the, the child close their eyes and think of the biggest, biggest, largest, largest thing they know and then describe that uh, to the class. You can do that for most concepts uh, that are in there as well. So make up poems, um, sing songs, whatever it is, you want that to get in the child's memory store so that they are able to use that again in a brand new situation uh, that they might uh, encounter and which they will encounter down the road in life. Concepts are really important to express feelings, ideas, and opinions. You might say, I like that story a lot, or I feel a little tired or grandma and grandpa live really far away, I really miss them. Anything that is really important to the child, you want them to be able to express to you. I will come back to this. 
Okay, concepts also play a really central role uh, to uh, reasoning down the road. So while a child might learn them at a very simple level in the